This is a green 3M bristle disc, 50 grit, made for this. They also make them in yellow for 80 grit and white for 120. They're gravy because they follow the contours of the part and resist excessive loading. Don't use green wheels on aluminum. Look at that. Look. Look at it. That oil gallery is really, really rough. I need to perform all three of the oil system modifications that I've covered on this channel prior to cleaning and assembly. This time around, the block doesn't leave the garage, and I'm doing it in the right order. The principle of doing this is to reduce turbulence at the surface level of the oil film layer. It might add a tablespoon of oil volume, which really isn't much, but it's supposed to improve your oil's flow characteristics throughout the main gallery. If there's anything that I can do to help this system moving forward, I'm doing it. Unfortunately, I've got to separate some manifolds and buy some more gaskets. So much for the budget. Honestly, I've got more invested in tires than this repair will cost. I put the head back on the block because with the cams installed, some of the valves are open and can easily be damaged. I need to take the turbo and intake manifolds off so that I can easily do the rest of these modifications and clean up everything else that touches oil. If your engine's crankcase gets contaminated, you have to clean out everything or else it will be there waiting to destroy your brand new bearings once it all goes back together. Oil galleries, lifters, oil cooler, oil filter housing, sensors, turbo, you name it. You have to handle all of that stuff. This means that in order to do the job right, every seal and gasket needs to be replaced. With the cams removed, I can't flip the head over to port the teardrop because parts will go flying everywhere. The rockers, lifters, and head bolt washers have to go. While I'm in disassembly mode, I thought I'd also take a whack at removing the oil gallery plugs. I managed to get two of them out. Before you start grinding on the head, protect the deck surface using an old head gasket. Hold it in place using at least four head bolts. This engine did not have a deep enough teardrop to make a hydraulic valve train work properly, much less have enough oil left over to feed a turbo. I've gone a tad deeper than stock to relieve some of the short block pressure, about 15 thousandths deeper. Now for the front case. My goal here is only to knock down and round out the sharp edges from the transitions in the casting. Anything that will create turbulent flow. Now that that's out of the way, it's gasket stripping and seal popping time. You can use a rag and friction to remove red RTV. The gray stuff will put up a fight. On aluminum parts, I always use new clean razor blades and carefully clean them by hand. It's time consuming, but I find aluminum parts too delicate to use any kind of power tools on. Supposedly the white bristle discs work for aluminum, but I'm too chicken to do it. Using razor blades, I usually end up with an unharmed, original machine texture on the gasket surfaces. Those wheels are 10 bucks a piece, and to me, maintaining that texture is time well spent. Now for the rear main seal housing. Six bolts have an oil separator ring that's pressed into the case. The seal is pressed in from the inside, so you have to remove one to get to the other. 
The valve cover gasket was so heavily coated with RTV that I had to remove globs of it from every one of the cam caps. The end caps that protrude from the valve cover are supposed to have some RTV on them, both sides of the caps if they were installed correctly. Do not scratch or dent the milled surfaces of the cam caps. A wire brush removes it very quickly, but if there's globs of it, you'll be there all day scrubbing. Scotch bright wheel. Let me show you. Give the head a liquid cleaning with a rag before you start scraping. Much of the gasket material will just wipe away, but you'll never be able to get it all like that. It's easier and better to resurface the head, but if you're using another composite gasket and the fire rings aren't too deeply impressed into the surface, then you can easily get away with this. Remember when I said I usually keep the original machine surface intact with a razor blade? Yeah, well this is what I meant by usually. Unless you're hot tanking parts or you have some old discontinued polygon, then liquid solvents will not remove RTV. Scraping is messy, tedious, time consuming work and nobody likes doing it. Maybe I'm just complaining because I'm down on my knees cleaning it. I'm using the rounded dull side of a pick to remove the globs from around the machine surfaces and a razor blade on all of the flat stuff. The rest will wipe up with carb cleaner and a rag. I found multiple layers of RTV here because there's even clear silicone squished into the middle. Someone used clear bathroom silicone. I'm pretty sure that you shouldn't do that. The valve cover gasket is hard as a rock, and though it's an expensive gasket set that I didn't want to buy, I'm going to be replacing it for peace of mind. Oil all over the block might give it lots of character, but it's a fire hazard. I'll be using a spare oil filter housing from a 92 Turbo Eclipse. This adds an oil cooler to the mix, which I didn't have before. You've seen this one already. This is the one I poured in the oil filter housing video. That takes care of my oil filter housing modification. It also adds an extra bung for the oil pressure sending unit. Now I can easily install an oil pressure gauge which I didn't have before. The original crankshaft is junk. I found that every journal on it was turned ten thousandths over. I have this great spare six bolt crank, freshly polished and chamfered, sitting on my shelf thanks to domestic killa. Who'd have thought that his donation would someday have helped me fix the Hyundai? Now its oil system modifications are complete, the gaskets are stripped, the seals are popped, can anyone guess what comes next? Yep, you guessed it. Snow. That's what always happens. <laughs>